Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to start now. If you haven't already got Android Studio running or a phone ready or an emulator ready, that's fine. The first bit of this workshop will just be set up, making sure we're all on the same page. Um, so, my name is Charlie. Um, and the first thing I'm going to say uh, is I am not an Android expert. Um, I learned to make Android apps uh, this Christmas. Um, I haven't been doing it for very long. I don't have a particularly extensive knowledge of Android, but um, the reason I'm telling you this is because I think it probably puts me in a good place to run this workshop, um, because hopefully like, you guys are also at beginner level. So what we're going to cover today is, first of all, making and running a simple app. So making the default app, making sure it runs on your emulator or on your phone. Then we're going to have a look at what activities are. Um, so I'm not going to cover that now, but uh, they're fairly important, and how we can move from one activity to another with intents. Uh, we're going to look at adding widgets and views to apps. Um, also, more specifically, we're going to be looking at accessing your gallery uh, on your phone um, and displaying and updating images. So, getting started. So, what we're going to do, if you've already done stuff before um, and you've got an app, so this is an app I created earlier. This is what we're aiming for. I'm just going to close this down um, and start a new project. So some of you have already done this. I've seen. I'm just going to click on Start a New Android Studio Project. Uh, this is asking me for the application name. I'm just going to leave that as default. That's fine. Again here, this is looking at the minimum SDK. So what this means is, if you look at the drop down here, you'll get a list of different versions of Android, with a smaller number being older Android, uh, and the bigger numbers being newer ones. Basically what this means is if you want your phone to work on more devices, i.e. older devices, then you'll want to make it smaller. If you only want your app to uh, have uh, new devices, so for instance if you're using new features of Android, you'd be setting this up to higher. But for the moment we're just leaving that at the default. Um, and now these are, so these are some defaults that Android Studio can automatically create for you. I'm going to talk about activities in a moment, but just for the now, I'm going to click on Empty Activity, and again, leave this name as the default. I'll just give Android Studio a second. So... Everyone should be seeing this. Is that right? Fantastic. So when this is loading up, it's not unusual for there to be red squiggly lines all over the place, things that are saying they're error. Um, and sometimes Android Studio will provide you suggestions as to how to fix that. Usually the best thing to do is just to follow these suggestions, click on and do what it tells you to do, and eventually, it's quite clever, it will resolve itself. Um, so for me it's fine, everything's running okay, I haven't got any red squiggly lines, um, so we are all good to go. Now, I'm going to start off by talking about what activities are, because these are very important, um, but they're not particularly hard to get head around. So an activity is basically just a screen. Um, when you open up your app, We'll have a, an opening screen, this is an activity. It might bring another screen to the forefront. It's kind of a bit like a web page, basically. I'm moving between web pages. Um, and you've probably already guessed that from these slides here. Uh, what this is saying is that when you first start up Android Studio, it can automatically create these for you. So you can have a default one with a, uh, a button or a Google Maps activity, for instance, stuff like that. Um, and that's about the basics, really. Um, I'm going to mention this thing called the activity lifecycle because I think it's important that you know what it is. Um, we're not really going to be using it in the following workshop. Um, but what it is, is when you first create an activity, um, there are a series of methods. Um, and a method is just basically, for those who don't know, just a block of code which is run. Um, and the names of these methods is what you can see here in the uh, rectangular boxes. Um, and they're run in a certain series, as you can see here. And eventually, when it's created, you'll get to this green box, 
uh, where the activity is running, displayed, everything's going fine. Um, and then different events will cause different things to happen and different bits of code to run. Um, and it's quite important to understand which bits of code run, or at least to know where to find out where these bits of code run. Um, because, for instance, if you rotate your phone, that will cause some parts of the screen to sort of be erased as the activity is destroyed and recreated. Um, so what you need to do in that situation is save some of the state and then reload it. We're not going to do that here, but it's important to know. If you want to know uh, more about that sort of stuff when you're creating an application, uh, there's a lot of good information on stackoverflow.com or developer.android.com. Another thing I'm going to mention before we launch into this um, is views. Uh, if you look at developer.android.com, um, then it will define a view as uh, this class represents the basic building block for user interface components. And what that means um, is basically it's bits of text, icons, uh, switches, buttons, etc. So in this image, you can see there's a pie chart, which would be a view. You've also got um, little bits of text underneath, which would be separate views. Um, and we'll be working with views later, which is why I mention it now. 